bless this meeting with all your intent. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for these servants who have offered this time in their lives to serve as leaders in the St. John community. We ask you, God, to give wisdom to the council members as they hear various reports concerning the various departments in the city. Help us all to hear one another and respond with kindness and respect. We ask for your direction for what is best for our community. Keep our hearts safe during this time as we seek to help the community of St. John move forward in becoming a better, safer place to live and work and worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Does anybody have additions to the agenda other than stated one and two? I need a five minute session session or assistant comment. Councilor Mayor. Because of 
because of his schedule. His like schedule. I, yeah, I asked him to get with me and, and so we could get some time together and he hasn't got back to him. Okay. Have we got the police procedures all digitized? Has that been done completely? That has not been done completely. Okay. Um, however, you know, because those changes have been approved, I would like to, to that to see that not be a hang up. Right. Um, you know, they've they've already been we've already gone over and they've already been approved. So it's just a matter of You've gone over them or we've gone over them. Well you weren't there at the council meeting when we went over them. Um, so it's it's weeks. yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Sherry, Bobby and, and Mark were all there. That's good. Um, so, you know, it's the only thing absent is actually switching the wording. In, in, in the digital format. Okay. okay. I don't know if there was ever a motion made. You guys had the workshop, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't think there was a motion made to approve those changes. I don't think I've seen anything come through on that. So, I mean, that's just a technicality, but we do need to see it go through the minutes so that it shows the adoption of those changes. I'm still up in the air on the fourth band myself. Did you see something? No, no, no. I think I was here at that, that meeting. No, I don't, no, I don't think you You might have been here for the meeting and then they did the workshop afterwards. Oh, uh, I don't know. And so you all went over and did the workshop. Kevin, do you, mind, do you mind me asking why you're still up in the air? Oh, it's just our town is on the borderline of population and I just just not sure that the money is there just well, it, it's, it's already in the budget it's been in the budget the bet we're December we'll have gone on two years down this officer and it's been in the budget both years yeah, well, I'm, um, looking, I'm looking to cut the budget yeah. um, if, we, if we can do it you know but we you know you talk about cutting the budget but you know I'm, I'm more concerned with these three gentlemen over here our officers are more concerned with their health and well-being. Right? I mean, I put myself in their shoes, and I would not want to be run ragged the way they're being run ragged. No time off, no family time. Once one of them takes vacation, one of them goes on training, the other two have to pick up the slack. I don't know about the rest of you, but personally, God forbid anything happen in this town that requires one of these three gentlemen to make a critical decision which could be life or death that could possibly affect their decision making if they are not 100%. I don't want them making that kind of decision when they are not 100% out there on, on duty. I want to hear what you guys got to say. I I'm mean, standing exactly where I stood all along. No need. Why? Just because we don't. That's not an answer, Bob. I'm sorry. Why? Give me a solid answer. Why? The crime that we talked about in here here a while back. Mm -hmm. What's another cop going to do that? What, what, what's going to justify that? Okay, that's fine. That, okay, I understand that. But what about these three gentlemen over here? They're yeah, working their butt off. Would you like to be working your butt off all the time? I do. Okay. But would you do you do it 24 hours all the time? Most of the time, these guys are running ragged here. Oh, I've run 24 hours. Now. I've done the same is. thing. I've gone on 10 minutes of sleep, more. Bob. When I was over there in the Middle East fighting for my country, I went on 10 or 15 minutes of sleep a lot of times. I'm not arguing. Okay. I put myself in these guys' shoes, and honestly, I think we need a fourth officer. Thank you, Mark. Troy, Terry. I, I don't necessarily know one way or the other as far as the hours and all that go, but I do know that if we go to that, we need to change the call time and other things. <clears throat> There's no need to be paying call time if we have four officers. Adam, what all would we gain from it? The biggest thing you're going to gain is the fact that uh, we are allotted vacation and holiday leave that we're not allowed to use because we, can, we don't have the coverage. Um, and you guys have already made the decision that we, even if we're not allowed to use it, 
then we, we don't get we don't get paid out and we just lose it, which is in complete contradiction to how the rest of the city employees are treated. Um, I think that rule is for everybody though. I just never department. paid out. That, that's okay, for the but, whole but, city. But, but what I'm but what I'm saying is the the city office can still function if they're down a person a while. Mel's crew can still function if they're down a person a while because they don't have to go twenty four hours a day. Um, and another fact that, that I've really held off on, on bringing up is the fact that, you know, Mel's, however many guys he's lost in the past year or two, his department has been required or re allowed to replace those guys instantaneously. And we've been almost two years now without being able to replace our guy. We just want to be treated fair. And we, we would like to be back to the staff that we were before. Because of where we sit right now, if just like Mark was saying, if somebody just simply needs to stay home sick, then you either got, you either have a guy working 24 hours straight or somebody coming in to work overtime. So not only are you paying sick leave for somebody that's not even working, you're paying a guy overtime, time and a half on top of it. And we've, we've shown, shown you guys on paper, four officers versus three, they came out to like $10,500 a year that you're going to save. And that's only because we've been fortunate enough that in these almost two years, none of us have had any serious injuries. If, if any one of us gets in a fight with somebody or simply just steps in a hole in somebody's yard, yard walk in the front yard and twist a knee, they're out for however many weeks, and the other two are going to be working that many weeks or months every day without a day off. And to me, that just doesn't make any sense. That gentleman, I can't remember his name, but go ahead, come in. Joe. Joe. His, I don't remember his recommendations if we went to four officers. He, re officers he recommended four officers. I know that, but when we, if you went to four officers, your call time was cut. There were some other things that were brought there were, up. There were some things he recommended to cut, yeah. Yes. So. That we, I mean, we ought to bring up, look at, and then go from there. But I, I thought we had already done that. I don't think anybody's going over call time that I know of. Well, some, something else I, I, I want to I want to make sure that you're all aware. There there is this complete misconception um, with a lot of people in town I've talked to that think that as soon as we get four officers, we will automatically have 24 hours a day covered every day. That's not possible. Joe, Joe the the gentleman that, you, that we hired for the uh, Mr. Palacios. And the psychologists that did our evaluations both said to cover 24 hours a day nonstop, you have to have five and a half officers, which is five in a part time. Because even with four, granted, there are going to be a lot of the times we won't be able to cover 24 hours. All it takes is a guy on vacation, a guy on training, and you're back with two guys. So we, we are more than willing to work with that and do everything we can with four officers to cover the 24 hour shifts. However, there are still going to be officers on call during that time. So, what, what do you do? I mean, do you just do you just not, even if somebody's on call for four hours, not, not allowed to leave town, has to be ready to put their uniform and go on any time, how do you justify not compensating them in some, some way? I think what Joe's recommendation was, if I may, that's fine. I don't um, remember. I just remember there was some things that and, and he I wanted to cut. And get his report and put it in your packets for next week if you need that. But um, I think his recommendation on the on-call time was to have it paid as actual on-call time. Yeah, Whereas I, and, right yeah, now, I don't have a you guys are paid regardless, which right. now you meet it anyway. But there for a while, when we had four officers, you were paid regardless of whether you had that on-call. And we don't have a problem with that at all because right. that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I think that's what Joe was saying. I'd say put his deal in, in the packet for next week so that we can see his report again, please. And then just get it decided next week, one way or the other. Get it over with. And do you or have a written meeting. recommendation Sorry. from the psychologist, <laughs> Adam? Well, that's. Because of what kind of record that is, okay. not everybody can see that. Okay. Um, however, the council was should have viewed of mine what they could view of it, 
and I showed the council both of theirs. And then the part that, that the, the council was able to see, it directly stated that his recommendation was four officers due to the fact of burnout and safety and all the, you know, everything we've been discussing now. What do you think, Sherry? I want to look at what John is going to present. Well, just Joe's yeah. report, because yeah. you weren't here during that time, were you? I'll uh, go off Adam's last few comments there. It's like you said, we won't have 24 hour coverage with four. We <coughs> would have to have at least five, and we don't have it now. That's where I find it hard to. But that's, the, but that's not what I said. I said, let's say we won't. I said, there will be times we won't. If we, if we don't have anybody gone to training, and we don't have anybody um, sick leave, vacation, or anything like that, then we can cover 24 hours. But it's not going to be every day because that's impossible to afford. Let's still give people days off. Well, just just FYI for everybody, if you go on to uh, St. John News Online, if you look at their poll, should St. John hire a fourth officer if it meant 24-hour police coverage? Well, we all know that's not going to happen, but you got 82% for and 18% against. So I think we need to listen to the people of this community that want this. So How many voters were there? Excuse me? How many voters? I have no idea. I'm not privy to that information. No. But that's not true. It says this is 24 hour police coverage. I, just, I know. We're not going to have to from what Adam just said. So, But still, you've got people who want a fourth police officer. So. If it means anything, I put it on our Facebook page. I laid it out exactly the steps that the council required us to go through to get the fourth officer, which we've done that, and asked for comments. And we ended up with uh, eight or nine comments for it. I have yet to have one person come up to me or comment on social media or any other way against it. Now, it's not saying that there are people against it. I'm just saying the feedback we are getting, we haven't had one person say that they don't want us to have Like I said, my deal with now would be let's look at Joe's report next week, our next meeting, and decide next week. Yeah or nay, one way or the other. So they're not in limbo one way or the other. I will have it in your packets, so you'll have it to review. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Any, any other questions for Adam? Yeah, Adam, you said that the guy we've got hired that, or supposedly that kind of helped out from Stafford has never worked. Right. Thank you. Yep. He's never, never helped us out a bit. Never. The, the, uh, the female officer over there did help us one day. Uh, thank you. Yep. Anything else, Adam? No. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Administration mail. Uh, as far as on the superintendent's report, uh, Mark brought up last time about the uh, sign out at uh, Four Street. Uh, I did some checking into that. Uh, we could put a sign up. Uh, I guess the, the question I have, and maybe it needs to go a little farther, is whether the city would own it, maintain it, or is it? Uh, we don't have a business association. You know, and, and as far as who would pay for the cost, who would be, you know, who could who could have their name up there. Uh, we could put it on the city right away. Uh, the, the problem is uh, there's actually a, a case right now where the city of Florence, where there was a sign put up on city right away and the adjacent property where it wasn't consulted, which we could do. Okay. And so they're, they're in a legal battle right now because of what they did. But it's something that can be done, but I, I guess the question I have, I called the state and I haven't gotten back with me yet, but the question I have, I guess, What's the logistics as far as, I mean, I don't, I don't know what, what all's behind I know the, the business owners want to be recognized. I mean, they, they have the right to, you know, apply for a permit to put up a, this would be an advertising sign that's, you know, not on their property, but advertising, you know, their location or their goods or whatever. So, but is that what, you know, when, when they started the, the business, people, I'm sorry, the beautification out there was just, you know, planting some flowers and maybe some flagpoles and get some water out there, but 
or you're looking at carrying a little bit farther or doing something different? Or well, it was um, it was the understanding of some of the uh, business owners that they thought that that was part of the beautification, but I've told them since then that no, it's something completely different. Right. Because even I misunderstood that myself. But what they're looking for is just something that would be out on the highway that people can look at and see what we have here in town. Because there's been times that I've gone to a couple places and they said, people said, we didn't even realize you were here. So anything that we could do to help at our local businesses, I mean, it'd be great. And if we could uh, make a project out of this somehow with a little bit of the city itself, possibly involve the school, that would definitely be a plus for for everyone, I think. So, and some of the logistics on it we'd have to work out. I mean, some of the business owners would have to chip in something. I mean, even if it's just paying for painting up a sign, you know, something small like that. I, I guess the thing that comes to my mind is, I guess, how, how many businesses, I mean, if, if you're going to just, if the city were to take this on and do every, every business in town, would you include home occupations? I mean, it could be a fairly large sign, and, and do you even have time to run down the highway or even going on 4th Street to even, even see it unless you stop? Unless you stop, right. I was just about to say, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know really offhand you know, how many businesses that would be interested in that. Well, see, that's another thing. We'd have to, find, that's one of the parts of finding out, and you've already done that. So now we need to find out if there's any ones besides the ones <coughs> that talked to me about putting the sign up. There may be more, there may be nobody wants to do it, so. You know, the fact that we don't have a Chamber of Commerce, you know, that would be a great project for a Chamber of Commerce, right, if we had our business association to, to take that on and get some ground. And, and they'd be paying up. dues to, to, to do help. that. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, you could get the money to put it up, and then when things start deteriorating, who pays for it then, you right. know, type deals. So, right. Uh, I can wait and hear back other, but that's just kind of where we're at right, right. now. I, I guess if you hear any more or anybody else has another idea of how it could come about, I guess we could, we could take it further at that point. Okay, so. I'll get with you later. We'll get, okay. You give me a little more information on it. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Mel. Uh, next thing ahead was an executive session attorney client uh, for 15 minutes. Uh, uh, city litigation matter. Uh, to myself, council, uh, and our city attorney. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Do we have any questions for Mel or do you have anything else? That's all. Um, what about the additions of the street closure? <clears throat> street closure for an event. Oh, that was Julianne who called and she said um, for Chris Dobbs having his. Um, wedding reception down at the livery stable. And she, he wanted to have the um, street closed between Exchange and, and Main on 4th during that time of his. Yeah, I would say you could probably only close it from the alley west because the post, post office. office. Maybe if everybody agrees or disagrees. Come in the evening, isn't it? Yeah. Or what day is it? It would be 4th Street, Saturday. October 12th. Saturday. I don't see a problem. Did you make a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. I second. second. Yep. All any further discussion? I'll refrain from voting. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Ball of stains. Motion yep. carried uh, well. The other thing, I guess, up there, and Julianne had uh, called in about the center line, uh, street center line markings, and I visited with her briefly about it. And what it was is, I, I understood that she had a question, you know, years ago that there were some, the yellow lines used to be on like First Street through, and uh, she even mentioned about four. Uh, I talked to uh, Philip Nesser. That's not, you know, First Street is not considered a connecting link at all. Uh, it was done that one time, and uh, 
you know, I think that's all. I think she's had a question on it, whether there's something to be some desirable or not. Honestly, last time I was down, I had people say to me, like, what's the deal? You know? <laughs> so, but I, I really can't speak for her, and that's just, like I say, just briefly over the phone. So, uh, whether you guys want to consider it or not. We want you to give her an answer. <laughs> the right answer. The right answer. Whatever you desire, it is. I, you, I, I, just, I, I talked to, uh, back when Chief Driscoll was here, yeah. and I talked to Adam about this, and he, he saw no real benefit as far as his department. You, know, you got one road, you got two, you, know, you got that road, if somebody drives left to center or whatever, you know, you got all these other roads, you do the whole town or, or whatever. So there's, and like I say, it's not a connecting lane, not required. To, to, to have the painting on there. Okay, any other questions for Bill? Have anything, Joanna? Um, just that we had not made a decision on the bids for the recodification. Yeah. We had three. You got, you got the bids in your packet, but uh, this is our lowest bid. Uh, one, one bid was way out of the ballpark. Do I need to use that company? Um, we have never used this company. We've always done the league was the other bid, and um, they don't offer the online support that this does and they're more expensive and it may take some time before they would be able to get to us. Um, there's other cities that recommended this one strongly. And it, it was the cheapest? Yes. Yeah. I remember seeing it. Yeah. This is I'll, a, this I'll make a motion to accept the cheapest one. This, this isn't a mandatory. No, we have a city code that hasn't been brought up today since 2004, I believe, and so it is a little bit, it's not a very good tool for us to be able to, and same for you guys, you know, because if there's been ordinances that change the code, we go to the code, then we have to check and see if there's any ordinances that have changed it. Sometimes like with the um, meter deposit, that's changed three or four times since the code. So keeping ourselves um, where we can understand things as well as, you know, research time. And then if the public wants to look at the code, it may not be what's really in effect because now they have to look at the ordinances. Whereas this would be, um, once it's up to date, they have a website which would, the link would be on our website. They go straight to this and they can even search it. It'll be a searchable document. If we pass a new ordinance, we send it to them. They update it on the website. And about, um, it, it was either twice or every quarter, they send new paper for your, you know, whatever papers changed in your hard copies. So, and that was all included in this price. And then the annual fee for the update was the 750 and the website. Compared to like hail and wind, it's mega, mega cheaper, very cheap. So. And then that city code financial notes, that's not the one. It was that other one. Um, Munich code, that was like twice what they were. Did we need any money in the budget for 2014? Not, well, we have operating budget that for both 2013 and 2014. So, okay. Troy has a motion. I hear second. Second. Any further discussion? I hate annual fees. Is, is this something? This will be well, an ongoing annual fee. Yeah, right? forever. We pay 3700 
You can always opt out to not doing that annually. Just like anything else. But if, I mean, if it's something you got, I mean, you guys can have it on your phones and access the code that quick. And the community can access it too if they need to. So if you find that we don't use it, you wouldn't have to continue. Right. We might average two codes a year that we update. Oh no. More. Ordinances? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A whole lot. Never. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of a code you're saying ordinance. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. That's three two three, three two, two. all the Kevin. Anybody have any questions for John? We have a skating rink application review. Pick your brain a little bit and see and let you know what we have to offer. Uh, we're a, uh, a 55, 56 year old hauling company out of Hutchinson. We do most of our business with small communities like this. We go out as far as Greensburg, Avalon, we go down to Medicine Lodge, a lot of the small communities along, along 61 uh, we service. And we service uh, not only uh, the trash, but we do a big, a big job with recycling too, which is very important to most people. And I, I don't know, I'd like you guys to get your heads together and think how important that is to, to your city. We can provide the containers uh, in curbside pickup for both the trash and the recycling. And that's what, that's the way we do it. And that's that's routine. For uh, each residence, or will that? Pardon will, me. For each residence, or will the for each recyclable be for each resident? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's the way. You know, we we, we have a, a like a saying: big city service, uh, small town. Big city touch, or small school. I can't. <laughs> It'd sound really good if you could say it. Though, yeah, sure. If I could say it, you'd, you'd really like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure it'd be. A, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good saying. Uh, this is Marvin Nisley. He's uh, the president, and one of the owners. Um, it's a family-owned company. It's owned by Marvin and, and his two brothers. Um, and I'll uh, and uh, Marvin can get up here and, and talk to you. And, uh, we can also, do, if you want, I don't know where we can project it, 
but uh, we've got a little PowerPoint presentation that, that tells about our company. And then if you have any any uh, any thoughts or, or questions, uh, you know, you can ask, ask them at your leisure. They sure don't have to be uh, posed tonight, that's, that's for sure. We're, we're confident, based on our, our, our history, that we can provide you a service that you'll like better than most other services that are available out there. And, you know, my job is easier calling on uh, end users and uh, businesses in that people have switched too nicely over the years that I've been with the, with the company. Not all, not 100%, but 99%, and I, that's not an exaggeration, so we do it better than anything they've ever experienced. So I'm, uh, I'm proud to, uh, to be able to stand here and tell you that. Do you have any questions now? And, and can we can we run that PowerPoint display and maybe on uh, I don't know maybe maybe on here yeah, yeah. You can show up. Well, if you're like me, a picture is worth a thousand words. And, yeah. Okay. And uh, if it take me five minutes to do the PowerPoint and five minutes to set up. All right. So well, we can go back to skating rink if you want to set up. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and set up. Yeah. Sure. I'll do. Yeah. Uh, Terry was right. It was actually two weeks. Two weeks. Wow, I, I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to blind table. First day of the month. You got all the rest of the month. I guess. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Blind table. Yeah. 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 They usually open in October. October, no, usually October. I don't know that we've ever, once we set a deadline, deadline it's okay to plug in here. Change yeah, that so. deadline, but I mean, it's up to you guys as far as on the running we ran ahead. I feel yeah, I feel like you, you gave everybody the opportunity to keep leave. Next year I said I wouldn't be opposed to it. I, I, mean, I wouldn't be opposed to next year. Doing it earlier. four weeks. Well, we started earlier. Yeah. Yeah, do we need to make a motion to delay the opening of the skating room for another couple of weeks? What are you guys? I, I'm well, I mean, then do we need to make a motion to go ahead and hire Accept the contract. Yeah, it's not a hire, it's not a payroll thing. Right. It's a contract. Well, then I guess how do I state it? I mean, I so, to make a motion to accept. Okay. Yeah, I don't like doing that, getting the application data. Okay. Well, then let's just stick what we've, I mean, and what we've done and, and you move on. You said it over the 19th, so it ran the 23rd or 24th or the 30th, right? Well, it ran for two weeks, whatever, and you pulled it off today? Yeah. We said the deadline to be the 30th. We sent it over on the 19th, so it would have ran. One week. No, it's still, it would have ran on the 25th. Let's see it from here. <laughs> so that's still only one week. Oh, one week. Yeah. I was looking at that calendar, but that's go to September. September. Yeah, you put it in when? 19th. Yeah, so because oh, we were on the 17th. Going, going around the 20th. Going around the 20th. Yeah. 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 I think two weeks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've seen the trash service before in the county, so I think I'll leave you. <laughs> you don't like my pretty pictures? <laughs> I've seen it once, man. <laughs> okay. But we've got the Have a good night, Jerry. Let's see. I'm going to go right here. No, I'm going to get over here. Can you all? Okay. Well, I think this will this will show what what we want we want to show. Well. I might just give a little history about why we're here. Um, I believe that the uh, trash um, contract that you have right now is expiring sometime next year. And so what we did was, uh, um, and also uh, Darren Reed with the county, he's with uh, the uh, landfill superintendent or whatever it's called. He called me last summer and said, you know, do you guys do any recycling? I said, let's talk. So I came out and I visited with him in his office, and uh, he said, um, uh, we'd, we'd like to expand the recycling. Uh, we're spending a lot of time, we're spending a lot of money with, at the county level with the recycling that's being done here in St. John and, and other cities, and what can we do? And uh, so then um, we talked some about options, and then I went to the, the uh, fact both of us were at the um, uh, St. Ch uh, Stafford County, um, probably been a month ago, and they said, well, yeah, we think we might be interested in looking at our options, uh, bring us more information. Well, to do that, we wanted to meet with the cities and see what is your interest? Are, is, is recycling um, something that you're interested in? Is it not? Are you happy with the, with the service that you're getting? and so on. So kind of what I'm doing now is honking my horn a little bit and, and bragging about our company and then uh, at the end then I'll answer questions uh, that you might have. So um, like Steve said, we are uh, family owned and operated. We've been in business for 55 years and if it doesn't look like I've been hauling trash for 55 years, that's okay. My dad started the business and uh, so we're second generation. Um, and this is the catchy phrase that uh, Steve couldn't get off his tongue. Small town touch, big city services. Is that much nicer than what I said? <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> we are, um, I'm an old farm boy, and so we, um, as Steve mentioned, we do a lot of small municipalities. That's, that's our forte we do. We do uh, toilets, we've got the um, uh, roll-off containers, and then, of course, the commercial and uh, uh, so on. So in commercial containers, we have uh, uh, recycling containers, four sixes and eights, and then the same thing in the uh, commercial containers. Frankly, they are the same container for the most part. It's just that they're labeled differently for mixed paper or cardboard or single stream recycling. So you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, open top containers, you've seen uh, open top containers on job sites here and there, and we offer the big compactors. Um, and incidentally, Steve's uh, other life was selling um, compaction equipment, so he sold a lot of, of uh, compaction over the last decades. Portable toilets, we do uh, uh, portable toilets for construction. Construction, of course, is the main thing for, for toilets, but there's also uh, parties, festivals, so on. Of course, the, the heart of um, recycling and trash is residential. When you think of a municipality like yours, residential service is the bread and butter. Uh, in most cities, it's weekly trash pick up, picked up at the curb. In most municipalities, bill with utilities, and I'm assuming that's probably what the city of St. John does now, is you bill each individual customer and then remit that to the, to the hauler. Um, we do have uh, uh, carts, and the tan carts are what we use for the single stream recycling that we do. Um, it's the exact same cart as the trash. It looks a little different from this angle, but uh, this is the uh, picture of what's on there, and it says what you can and can't put, put in it, and over here is a picture of uh, single stream. It's really slick because you don't have to sort out the cardboard and the paper and all this other stuff. In uh, most 
and we can set it up either every other week pickup or once a month. Uh, commercial containers, recycling, we kind of talked about that. Here's a picture of our, um, we don't want to miss any of this. This is our uh, an overhead picture from Google uh, Maps of our uh, facility, and we are uh, getting ready to build a uh, recycling uh, facility right here. We expect to break ground within just a few days, and what we'll be doing is not so much sorting of the material as um, dumping it and putting it into trailers for shipping to a sorting uh, facility. Um, of course, our people. Like Steve said, uh, uh, here's a picture of my father and us brothers. Uh, and a picture of, I'm um, sorry that doesn't show up too well, but uh, at our last uh, Christmas uh, party. Go around the back shoulder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so again, small town touch, big city services. We've got, uh, we think, uh, a lot of the services that uh, you see in the big town, and yet you're able to uh, get them right here in rural Kansas. So we think that's a, that's a good deal. A lot of things have changed since 1956 when Dad started the business, but uh, our commitment to quality service is uh, one thing that we uh, have always promoted. So, so I'm just curious: is is would you like more information? Do uh, you want me to go home? Just tell me what what you want me to do. I'd like a little more information on prices. Same here. Okay. And see that. Put it together. Is um, this is a the way the county does it now? The county uh, picks up the tab for uh, disposal. They also pay for uh, transportation. They subsidize the transportation for our company. And we do. I should have mentioned we do a lot of uh, uh, service in rural areas in Stafford County. Uh, we don't do any work here in St. John, um, but Stafford County subsidizes our company to come in and, and help with, with uh, transportation. So if, you, if you'll, um, uh, I'm not trying to put you off, I'm just saying that we're in, we're in conversation with the county and as the county tells us where this is going to go in the next 10 years then we'll be able to come back and say, okay, this is what we're going to be able to offer you. And until the county says, we're going to keep on subsidizing or we're not going to subsidize anymore, we're going to pay, continue to pay for the, the um, disposal or we're going to have you guys collect the, I mean us, collect the, the uh, disposal. So it, it, this isn't something I'm going to be able to come back to you in two weeks and say, here's the numbers. I think you're probably looking at maybe first of the year. Maybe that's, um, that's I don't think that's too away. optimistic. Pardon? It's not very far away. I was going to say that. It's not very far away. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that okay. works. See, our contract is out February. February, yeah. Is it February or March? February. February. Okay. One of my questions would be, does it have to be curbside service? The only reason I like the alley is because you come into town on that one trash day, everybody's got the trash set down by the curb. The, um, from the trash man's perspective, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, the curbside is preferred. Um, I think that when you go into cities where the trash carts are used, you will see a different picture than when there's uh, you know, some beat up cans uh, sitting by the, by the curbside. That's not to say that, that there can't be extra trash you know, beside the cart and, and that, that that can be an issue, but I would say that um, the, uh, the negative about having a curbside a lot of it goes away when you when you use the cart. 
Is the cart something that, that you're kind of leaning towards or not necessarily? Well, I, I come, come from a bigger city than St. John and that's all we ever saw was the carts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was much preferable than a beat up tin can out there. It okay. like it's about ready to fall apart. Kind of like what I've got right now. Okay. Well, that's what we're hearing a lot is that, yes, uh, folks like the like the cart and uh, so we'll we'll stay in touch with and uh, probably we'll want to get with your clerk here and look at um, uh, the numbers and uh, how many uh, like how many businesses how many um, the sizes of the, the containers and get some preliminary figures for us to start going back and, and uh, looking at that. You, uh, <clears throat> that be something where you would just show up with all the new trash cans and that uh, uh, revenue that we have to pay you to buy the trash oh, cans? Or the how the carts stay you? ours. I yeah. see. Yeah, we buy the carts. Um, yeah. Any idea how many um, residents you have here in the city? Not off. I, I don't run the utilities, okay. so I, I would say 600 maybe okay. would be my guess. Yeah. Right? In, um, in medicine, we just rolled that out April the 1st of 13, and uh, I think there they went, they went with a, with a uh, uh, recycle cart was standard unless you requested that you don't want the recycle cart. And um, the cart manufacturer delivered the carts and set them at the uh, locations designated by the city. And it seems to me like it took them five days to do, four days to do. So they're they're pretty efficient in, in getting the carts out. Um, so yeah, we the the carts and, and commercial containers stay out. And then with, with the commercial containers, I contacted all the businesses in town. And we determined accurately the size of the requirements, and then we ordered those containers and provided them. Both recycling in some instances and trash as well. If you own your own dumpster, will you dump our, du our dumpster? We typically don't. Uh, it's an issue of, uh, uh, well, we use we use automated equipment. The mechanic arm reaches out, grabs the cart, dumps it, and sets it back down. Um, it's more efficient, safer, and so your cart may look very similar to ours, but it may not be compatible. So we just draw the line and say, if it's our cart, we dump it, and if it's not, then, then we don't. So, um, and we su supply it, it's all part of the package. So, you know, if you want to use it for something else, that. Some people say we use it for dog and cat food. So I don't know. Now we're, he's talking commercial dumpster. Oh, on the back oh. of the truck. What he's saying. Okay, I thought he was this Yeah. Well, the same thing is true. In fact, you'll notice uh, I've got everything buttoned up here. But you'll notice on the on the top here, this top um, uh, row of commercial containers. There, um, we use a, a front loading commercial container as opposed to the rear load. Uh, there again, it's, it's more efficient and it is safer because the driver doesn't physically have to get out and uh, he picks it up, he dumps it, and he sets it back down. And it's, it's a lot more uh, cost effective, especially on the bigger one. Because and these, these don't have casters on the ground. They can. They can. Yeah, the littler ones, uh, the twos and threes can have casters, but typically, the bigger ones don't. I mean, the, an eight yard, that's the biggest. It yeah. Would, it can weigh a thousand pounds. Hey, well, what's ours, Kevin? Oh, they're, yard? They're, they're bigger than that. Does it have four legs on top? Yeah. Yes. It could be a two or a three, probably. Yeah. I'll come over tomorrow, Bob, and I'll run around and look at some other containers and see what you've got here. Because there's a lot of containers. Yeah. I mean, I know several people that own their own. Oh, I don't know if we own ours, but we got a four out there, too. Okay. I'll look at some of the commercial containers and, and, and what, there, give you some sizes. We're in an information gathering mode yeah. right now. And, okay. and, uh, 
we'll collect some information and then make arrangements and be back to see you in a month or two. Okay. That works. That'd be great. Good. Thank you very much for your Thanks time. For Thank, Thank you. Appreciate Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's one of the deals where we could say it's fine this year, but next year we're going to put it up for bids and do it that way to where it would be cleaned up. Well, it makes sense to me. Somebody that owns ground on one of the other sides of it needs it. Yeah, they don't actually own any ground, but they do They well, do farm, farm ground farm it. that is to the west of it compared to the east of it where you got to jump around everything to get to anything. Where laid out to where it got good farm. Well, they're you know I talked earlier about you know they got the wells drilled and everything pretty well done. They don't have uh, pumps in yet, but that that part's oh. already been established where they're going to be in there. The only comment I would say is that I've had people ask me you know what are we going to do, and I assume we were going to do the traditional. Well, and that's why I'm, this is just what I'm bringing up. Yeah, so that I guarantee you, there's no way to get a bid out. Or ask for bids in two or three weeks for two or three weeks and get anything done to where it's going to look semi nice next year. I mean, where they go in and plant weed or something like that, it'd be cleaned up, it'd look nice throughout the year, and we could open it up for, for bids at that point. Well, that's I, mean, okay, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying let them have it forever. I mean, right. I'm, I I'm just saying to get it cleaned up and where it looks nice this year. I would like to like us to be able to go ahead and tell Marlon, you know, for forty bucks. How many acres is there? We, we can draw out the lines. We can figure out the acres, and and you farm it, put it to weed or something, make it look nice, and let's go move on. I think the last time we put it out for a bid on the alfalfa, there was like fifteen acres there, and there'd be less than that now with the you know the, the ponds and everything. Else. Yeah, I bet there's probably not going to be seven to ten acres, if even that, probably. And it would be for tilling only, no chemical, no fertilizer, no, right? Well, but we'll have that 100 foot. You're going to you're, you're gonna have to follow the state's regs on, right. on your well sites. Right. But, it, but it, after it, that, I don't want to limit them to what they can do. Right. I mean, right. let them farm it like they do their other ground. Right, yeah. But there was a concern about, you know, med marks and everyone out there as far as what is actually done out there. And we were going to try and get a plan up, and, and I know. Uh, Blank on his name, PropQuest. Uh, Jim Gleason. Jim Gleason was going to try and help him get something up, and that's what one idea he had was to figure out some rotation, or I'd even people had said, well, we might just put out uh, just what they would propose to do, you know, and we could say, you know, okay, I want to plant alfalfa. Somebody said they wanted to plant brome or something, whatever, and say, I want to put that to brome for the next five years and we would look at that and say okay and this other guy says well, I want corn and we may not want corn you know so I'm saying we could we could do a request for proposal and we could just pick whatever we right. like so well like I said I, I'm not this ain't a long-term deal it's just so we ain't got to worry about it next year yeah, and take care of it, it and, and, and 
wait, he, right now, is, it, is he saying he's going to plant wheat? Is that what he would do? Yeah, I, he, he would go ahead and drill it to wheat this year okay. and get it taken care of, and then we'll just tell him it's, if it's something the council agrees to, then we'll just tell him it's a year deal. Next year we're going to put out bids on it. There's probably going to be some stipulations on it, but draw our barriers, keep our yeah. keep our 100 foot, I think is all it is, Yeah, is 100 foot, 100 foot radius per well. Draw lines if we want to, however you want to do it. They could probably GPS them you know, to get it in, those guys. Yeah. Well, well anybody you, can. That way you don't have to farm around a post. Right. Well, well you go to farm the only thing whatever else and draw lines. We've already the been there with, with you know, trying to keep people away and they farm closer and closer and closer. So, you know, I'm saying we're going to have to put something out there or you know, we fight that on other well. So, mm -hmm. we'll do something so they know where they can farm. It's up to you guys. Like I said, that was my only deal. So we get it look nice and move on. I don't have a problem with it. I think it ought to be let out for bids. Well, well, yeah. Grow, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. right. About the I totally agree. Year, right? But I'm just saying we ain't got time for that this year and get anything done. I know where it needs to be done. Yeah, yeah you're I mean, you're bidding, you're do your bidding done before they cut their wheat. So as soon as the wheat's off. Well, or we just set a deadline. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is when we're going to open bids. I mean, we can open bids. After we agree to this, I don't care. That's right. When you open bids and and you start after wheat crop or whatever, but like I said, that way it does get and it frees up your guys. I mean, you ain't got you ain't got we ain't spending money and time and guys down there to mow weeds. Forty dollars an acre is not out of line at all. That's right. no, that's not. Especially you probably not gonna find anybody else unless yeah, they have the ground right beside it. It's even gonna be yeah. close because yeah. right. otherwise that's it's gonna be a huge pain in the you know what. So, I mean, I think it's a fair offer, and, and I mean, I would like to see us do it, but the, the motion. Yeah, I'll put it in the form of a motion. I'll second it. Sure. But make sure it's in there. I'll add to his motion that it's put up for bids. We need to set a date when we're going to put it I'd, I'd like to hear your idea. I, I'll and make a motion to allow uh, spare acres or however you want to. Marlin, whatever, to farm the ground for 40 bucks an acre, cash rent, to put a wheat crop in, with with the knowledge that it's only for this crop and that there will that will take bids for the rest of it for the following year. Any additions or further discussion? And that, that it needs to be at least a five-year term too when you do that. Well, we can just make that in our bid specs yeah, the next we'll time. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to have her read that to us. Awesome. Okay. Marlin's Fair to farm the ground for, and I probably should have maybe a legal or something on the ground, but something for $40 per acre cash rent this year with the understanding that next year it will go out for bids. All those in favor? Do you have a second? Here you already uh, need sure it. Oh, okay. All those in favor? All right. All opposed? I have it. Okay. Any other? Nothing. Any policy changes? Police policy changes? Old business? You want to start this this comment? Finalize that Finalize that next week. question? <sighs> <laughs> I think I answered it right there. <laughs> no. We don't. What is it? <laughs> I was asking if you wanted a citizen's comment or a citizen's question. Uh, on the Nisley presentation. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh well, I negotiated years ago the contract that you're under now, and in that, if you've got a residence or or a hookup, a hookup in the city, 
you pay for trash whether you use it or not. I got three separate locations, and I'll only use trash basically on one, and it's about two bags a week at the most, you know. But I'm paying on three locations. I bet I haven't had trash picked up at my house in a year or two, you know, because I, I don't stay there that much. It's more like a tax. Huh? Yeah, it's more like a tax for me, you know, and that's something for you to consider. I'll go ahead and continue to pay it if that's what you guys decide, but it gripes me every time in the end of the month when I see what I'm paying and I'm not getting any service for it, you see. So that's I, it's just a comment for you to think about. I'm in the same situation. Okay. In old business. Anybody want to talk about policy? Well, we decided we were going to settle that next week. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, okay, I thought you guys had decided on the policy in your workshop. You just didn't come out and make a motion. Mm, no, I don't think we made a motion afterwards, no. No, because we weren't in regular right. session. Right. So. We were supposed to wait for um, Julianne, to, Julianne get it. to get it all uh, digitized in, mm -hmm. so that's right. That's what we're still waiting on right now. That's right. Okay. Then I'd make a motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second that. It was second. I have a question. On the police deal, do a comparison like how many hours of overtime they have and what that costs us compared to having a fourth officer. You see what I'm saying? I do, but you know, the times of overtime depends on what's going on in the community. When we were having. But like on call, I mean, are, are they get four hours a week on call, no matter and, what? Or? Well, that's what um, Joe. Well, Joe's know. idea was, which I don't know if we can actually talk about. Well, really, we have adjourned. Adjourned. But I'll, I'll put no, this down. Yeah, I just kind of want to know. Yeah, what's the right. motion's been put up in a second. Right. And this has. I asked for with any that. further discussion. I'm still talking. She wanted to throw her tents in for the next meeting. Okay. Now, all in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Have. Aye.